video I'm going to show you how to measure the internal resistance of a solar panel so you can figure out what you can use it for and how big of a load it can be used with. So first let's uh, take this thing outside. By simply connecting a voltmeter to the output terminals we can measure the open load or the no load voltage about two and a half volts. Now we need to go get some resistors and try to measure what happens whenever we actually connect various loads. Let's say if we put a 1000 ohm resistor across the red and black, it drops about 30 millivolts. Not very much. Okay, how about a 330 ohm load? 330 ohm load? Looks like it's dropping about 100 millivolts. And then a 47 ohm load and it drops at least half a volt. So with the solar panel changing its voltage like this, how would you know if the solar panel will give out enough voltage for whatever application you have in mind? Because depending on what resi equivalent resistance your load or your device has, then the output's going to change. Well, we can do a pretty quick calculation and give us a number. It's called the internal resistance or like the output resistance. And with that figure, then you'll be able to approximate what voltage will be produced given the load resistance. Let's start with when we had no load connected. The output voltage was two and a half and the current was zero. But once the load resistor is added, the voltage drops about half a volt. We can use Ohm's law to calculate the current, 42.6 milliamps. Since we know that current, and we also know that half a volt was dropped across the internal resistor in the solar cell, then we see that the internal resistor is 11.75 ohms. If we model the circuit a little bit differently, so that the 2.5 open loop, or the open load voltage is a independent voltage source, and the approximated 12 ohm internal resistance, then we can see that if the load resistance approached 12 ohms, then the output voltage, or the load voltage, would be equally divided between the internal and the external resistor, thus cutting the voltage in half. So anytime the load approaches 12 ohms, you would see close to 1.25 volts out. However, if the load resistance was significantly higher, like 1,000 ohms, then it would drop a proportionally greater amount of the voltage, and that's why when we used the 1K ohm resistor, we saw a very almost insignificant voltage drop. Now let's take a look at what happens whenever we use a DC motor as our load, which will be a pretty small resistance. Now with this motor connected to the solar panel, you can see that the voltage has dropped almost completely to zero and the motor's not spinning. But we're inside, so I wouldn't expect any solar energy in here. Let's go out. As you can see, this solar panel has enough power to spin that motor. So it's pretty fun playing around with solar panels and seeing what you can do with them. And just also remember that you can use a load resistor and perform a simple calculation to figure out that internal resistance of the solar panel. So uh, happy hacking, and I hope that you enjoy these beautiful summer days. See you next time. Last thing before I go, I forgot that I didn't give you the voltage divider equation, which is a pretty basic thing you learn early on, but I mean, um, it's nothing like having it spelled out right in front of you. So um, this should be V, yeah, so if you want to find out what the voltage across your load will be, then measure your open load voltage, which in our case was two and a half, measure the internal resistance, and then that's open load times the load resistance divided by the quantity of the, the sum of those, the internal resistance and the load resistance.
Um, so and again, that's just the voltage divider equation. Um, but there you have it. So, yep. Thanks for watching.